my name is Vikrant. I work for Polytech. Um, Polytech is a is a vibrometer or an optical measurement systems company. Um, it's a German company. Uh, been around uh, 52 years now, and this is what we do. Here's uh, one of the systems uh, called a laser Doppler vibrometer. Um, fundamentally, uh, the way it works is is laser Doppler effect. Um, we are looking for any um, change in the optical path dis uh, distance between the sensor and the vibrating object. Uh, that uh, change in the optical path uh, uh, distance uh, causes a Doppler shift. And the Doppler shift is directly related to velocity or displacement, which is one of the misconceptions that, you know, or the questions, you know, what are the primary quantities coming out of a vibrometer. So here you can see uh, we have three different outputs on this particular system. Uh, we, uh, a vibrometer fundamentally measures both velocity and displacement. In this case, we have velocity, displacement, and uh, differentiated acceleration as well, uh, derived from velocity. Um, there are two components here to the system. We have a, a sensor head and a controller, so the laser source and um, the interferometer, everything's built into the sensor. Then the demodulation electronics, everything's demodulated here. And the output is uh, super uh, generic. Uh, it's a analog voltage that is proportional to velocity displacement or acceleration. Um, there are a couple of different laser sources uh, out there depending on what kind of applications we are after. Uh, sometimes we use a helium neon laser, a red laser. In this case, we are using an infrared laser, uh, which is invisible to the eye, uh, which is why we use a, a green pilot laser, uh, so we know where we are measuring. As far as the basic specs of the system go, it totally depends on what uh, the application uh, demands. Um, fundamentally, in terms of uh, amplitudes and frequencies, uh, a vibrometer is capable of measuring all the way from DC to several inches, uh, theoretically several feet, uh, but yeah, you might lose focus after some point. In terms of frequencies, it goes all the way from, you know, uh, DC to several megahertz. Um, vibrometers these days are capable of going all the way up to 2.5 gigahertz in frequencies uh, for some applications. So over the past few months, we've had quite a few support mm -hmm. questions that we've gotten regarding laser vibrometers, vibrometry, how to set it up with vibration view. And I'm going to go through the steps to kind of how to set it up in the software. But there are a few other questions that we commonly get yeah. that really aren't my questions to answer. So we already addressed one in the introduction. The first was what signals do I get out of my laser vibrometer? Got it. And that was velocity and displacement are true values mm -hmm. and then integration or and then integrated acceleration. Differentiated, yeah. Or, thank yeah. you. <laughs> Differentiated <laughs> acceleration. Uh, the key there is that both velocity and displacement are true Correct. values. So one of the questions that I get is which one should I use? Mm -hmm. Uh, do you, can you just give me a brief explanation of when I might choose velocity over displacement or displacement over velocity? Got it. So the rule of thumb is, generally speaking, lower the, velo uh, lower the frequencies of interest, you would choose direct displacement. Okay. Also, it depends on what quantity I'm after. If I'm after velocity, you know, that's usually the go-to parameter to, to measure. You know? And then, in most cases nowadays, you know, the data acquisition systems are so smart that uh, you know you can do everything you need to in uh, your software. However, as you know, the displacement, if you're after displacement, the, the lower the frequencies, right, the integration errors are inversely proportional to the frequencies. So the lower the frequencies, the higher the integration errors. So lower the frequencies, you do want to measure velocity direct. Generally speaking, I would say you know, 150 hertz is like the cutoff, you know, uh, okay. Higher than you can use velocity, lower the display. But again, so much depends on the application and what's my excitation frequency. Perfect. Uh, one of the other questions that I had asked mm -hmm. uh, is regarding the surface preparation and what yeah. type of surface I should be using for a laser vibrometer. Yeah. Um, 
you give me a yeah brief? yeah so I mean uh, you know uh, if we go back to the basics sort of it, it it helps us answer this question in the sense that um, a vibrometer is always uh, looking for some light coming back to the sensor mm -hmm. to the detector so uh, if, if my so that defines my surface so how can I get more light back either my surface is nice and reflective and my alignment is good so all the lights coming back or my stand of distance is uh, less so that more light is coming back so so you try to do whatever you can to increase the amount of light coming back um, so uh, to answer your question about the surface prep generally speaking in this day and age you should have to do no surface preparation in very rare cases do you need to you, you need to do this I mean for example the test we did today you know you're measuring on this highly absorptive black surface mm -hmm. and still we were getting ample signal return so, yeah, there was a time we used to have to do it, but I think most of the times you can get away without it. Okay, great. And is there any other tips and tricks that you might have or mm -hmm. specialty kind of tools or any, yeah. anything along those lines just for a new user, somebody that I grabbed this off the shelf, I've never seen it before. Uh, do you have any information that those type of people can go out and look for mm -hmm. to learn more about how to set this up and how to use it. Yeah. First of all, just try things out. You're not going to break anything, so just go at it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's my first sort of suggestion. Um, as long as you don't drop it, you're going to be fine. Um, there are a lot of resources online, uh, even you know, from Polytech offers these regular webinars, that's always a good resource, and you can reach out to us if you have any questions. But uh, I mean, it's super straightforward to use, I mean, just you know, hook up, point and shoot, really. So uh, if you get stuck, we are here to help. Great. Well, thank you very much for your time, and thanks for letting us borrow your laser vibrometer. Thank you. Thank you. The first thing that we're going to do is set up the laser vibrometer. We have it connected and powered on. So first, I can look at my sensor. In this case, I can hit the autofocus, and the laser will automatically focus to the position based on where I have it set. You can see at the bottom that I have good signal. Next, we look at our velocity input or output. In this case, this laser vibrometer outputs both true velocity and displacement. So here is the important part. I have to set both my bandwidth and my range. And for the test that I'm going to run, the two meter per second range is the range I want to use. I have both the tracking filter and high pass filter turned off because vibration view in the VR9500 can take care of that for me. The key here is the sensitivity. In the upper right hand corner you can see that my sensitivity is one millimeter per second per volt. We do the same for displacement. In this case I already have it set up. So again 5 kilohertz bandwidth and a range of 20 millimeters and acceleration a thousand meters per second squared. Um, and again, the sensitivity in this case is 500 meters per second squared per volt. The next step is to configure my inputs in vibration view. Go to configuration, inputs, and my first sensor connected to channel one is my accelerometer that is on the armature of the shaker. That is a TEDS enabled accelerometer of 9.96 millivolts per G. So I can click use those values. Now the next three are going to be my velocity, displacement, and acceleration outputs from the laser vibrometer. And the sensitivities provided by the laser vibrometer are in volts, or are in units per volt rather than millivolt per unit as we typically see with accelerometers and other sensors that are normally connected. So to set this up, we can go to advanced settings. And in advanced settings, I can switch my units to be ordered in the other direction. So we are actually going to change our first, so this is channel two, which is the velocity output. So we scroll up to velocity, 
and it's in meters per second. So I'm going to enter in meters per second per volt, which is the sensitivity that is set by the laser vibrometer. In this case, I have one meter per second per volt. Next is displacement. So we change this to displacement in millimeters, millimeters per volt. That was 10 millimeters per volt. Our last is going to be acceleration in meters per second squared per volt. And 500 meters per second squared per volt. I can save that and you can see that my meters per second, millimeters per volt, and meters per second squared per volt are all saved. Now I can run a quick system check to make sure that I have everything configured appropriately. Should start seeing motion on my shaker and I can see that I am getting signal through all of my channels. If I look at my spectral density here, I can see that or my FFT, I can see that I am getting feedback and my sensors are configured appropriately. All right. So let's run a quick sign test and I have one created here. In this case, we look at our test settings. I'm doing a 1G sweep from 20 to 200 hertz. My second step in my test schedule is to do a resonance table and we'll actually demonstrate the sign resonance track dwell software with our phase tracking or peak tracking options. So I have a fairly slow sweep rate. Uh, the parameters tab, the only thing I really changed for this control is I increased my increasing rate to allow the controller to increase the amplitude more and I enabled adaptive feedback to allow the controller to adjust response time uh, adaptively based on the resonance. So I click OK and now I can run my test. So as our sign sweep finishes we are going to see a resonance table this resonance table shows me all of my different resonances that were detected that met whatever resonance settings I have in my test settings. In this case, I have three that were selected. Uh, we're only really concerned about this first primary resonance of the beam, the first bending mode. And currently you can see that it is showing the phase between channel 3 and channel 1 is 59.6. Now this is an interesting characteristic of a laser vibrometer. In tests that use accelerometers, most of the time we expect to see around 90 degrees phase difference. But because a laser vibrometer has some fixed amount of time delay, our ideal resonance will most likely never be at 90 degrees. Uh, in this case, because it is a slightly higher frequency, we're up in the 80 Hertz. I'm actually going to control on velocity or displacement. Acceleration in this case is calculated so I would want to use one of the true values. Uh, it really doesn't matter which one I use because we're not so extreme high frequency and this particular beam does have a measurable amount of displacement. So we could change our displacement value that we wanted to control to. We could change the phase, but we'll just let this run. And to start, we're going to use phase tracking, which essentially locks the phase between channel three and channel one, meaning as my beam fatigues, the controller is going to have to decrease in frequency to maintain the phase difference between those two channels. Uh, I click apply and run selected tones. My SRTD controls box, I can populate some additional graphs that are useful for sine resonance track and dwell. 
So you can see I have an acceleration versus time, phase, and frequency versus time. And then on the other side, I have phase, transmissibility versus phase, and transmissibility versus time. Now these transmissibility graphs are linked to each other so that I can see exactly what is going on. And if I change this back to my 55 that I was ideally starting at what you can see let's just reset this as my control comes up you can see the controller finding that phase locking in and now dwelling at this frequency for some period of time with that fixed phase value. The new feature in Vibration View is this peak tracking checkbox. What this allows the software to do is vary both phase and frequency to find peak transmissibility. So by enabling that you can see that I no longer can enter a demand phase. What the software is going to do is start to vary that phase slowly and start tracing out the transmissibility versus phase curve for this particular resonance. And as it seeks through and finds that increase in amplitude, you will see that it will begin to dwell at that higher peak. So we will let this run for a little while and let the software find the appropriate peak, and then continue to dwell at that. We've looked at using a laser vibrometer for a variety of different sign tests and evaluations, uh, whether that be a sign sweep or sign resonance track and dwell. Some of the other questions that we've got is, can I use this for a random test or a shock test or sign on random? And really the answer is yes in most cases. For shock type pulses, you may run into issues with the time delay in the laser vibrometer, depending on how short of a duration of a pulse you are looking at and the response of the signal. Uh, you can also use a laser vibrometer for control. It is important to keep in mind that the laser vibrometer, if you are using it for control, has to be protected so that the beam of the laser doesn't get broken or interfered with while trying to run a test. So there may be some safety concerns there, but the fact is in order to connect and run the software, it is relatively simple. You power on the laser vibrometer, set up your inputs in both the laser vibrometer control software and in vibration view and run your test. There is no magic to it. If you have any questions, please reach out to support at vibrationresearch.com. And thank you for your time. Special thanks to Polytech for sending us their latest model of laser vibrometer, and especially for sending for Krent to come out and give us a little bit of an introduction to some of the science and key points for running a laser vibrometer.